What's going on guys, Chase on Two Wheels here, and I am so freaking excited to finally bring you guys the Rurock Atlas 2.0 full-on review. I've had the helmet for a couple months now, and I know it's taken me a bit of time to get this review out, but the main reasoning for that is, if you guys aren't aware, these things are hard to freaking come by, especially in the current times the world is in. But I wanted to wait until I had my carbon model because if I'm gonna do all the filming that I gotta do for this review, I want it to be on the coolest looking one they have. So I was like, I ain't doing it until I can get my carbon one. So today, let's review the Rurok Atlas 2.0 Carbon Edition. All right guys, so here we are with the Atlas 2.0. Now for any of you guys living under a rock, the Atlas 2.0, as the name implies, is the second version of the Atlas motorcycle helmet that the company Rurock put out a little over a year ago now. Before then, Rurock had only really done snowboarding helmets and had made some really cool stuff in that area, but they had never made a motorcycle helmet before. So naturally, the Atlas 1.0 had a couple things that really needed an upgrade to get it to the standard that we're looking at for in the market, but out of the gate, it was a phenomenal helmet. But after they released that helmet and got a ton of feedback from the community, these dudes went back to the drawing board, took all the feedback, and somehow are now releasing an upgraded Atlas 2.0 already. Now, I'm just some dude making videos on YouTube, but I'm mind blown that a company can have a product as serious as a motorcycle helmet and make a new version of it in less than six months and be able to offer a new upgraded model that fast. It's kind of crazy and unheard of to do that, but here we are. So, in today's video, we're gonna go over some specs of the Atlas 2.0. We're then gonna go over the upgrades that they made from the Atlas 1.0. I'm gonna go over what I thought of it after riding with it for a couple months. And we're even gonna touch on some ways that I feel like this Atlas 2.0 could still get better. With this being a safety related product, let's go over the safety approvals first. This helmet is DOT, <coughs> basically pointless. <coughs> and more importantly, ECE approved. I know a lot of you guys are like me and you kind of just laugh when you see DOT only approval because we all know that that process is not that rigorous, but fear not, you got ECE and DOT in the Atlas 2.0, so your head is going to be safe. A feature continuing on from the Atlas 1.0 is that Fidlock magnetic buckle that is probably one of my favorite aspects of the entire helmet. I'm not going into all the details, but Rurak has some crazy strength test of this Fidlock buckle lifting a freaking motorcycle. So it's super strong for all you guys that are out there saying it's not as strong as D-ring. If you guys don't know what the Fidlock buckle is, it makes putting the helmet on and off very simple and fast. It magnetically attaches the ends together instead of having to use their traditional D-ring setup. No lie, once you use this Fidlock buckle and then you go back to a helmet with a D-ring setup, it suddenly is annoying as hell for how long it takes to take a helmet on and off and buckle up versus with Rurok, you put it on, you click it, and you're good. It's amazing. While we're here at the bottom of the helmet, let's go ahead and point out that now the Atlas 2.0 has these little emergency straps at the bottom of the helmet. You guys have probably seen these in a lot of premium helmets, but what they basically do is if you get in a wreck, an emergency responder can use those to easily remove your head from your helmet if you were in like a wreck or something like that. So I'm really happy to see the added safety features that they added in the Atlas 2.0 with these little emergency straps. Moving on, let's talk about the aspect of these helmets that was probably the most shocking to me when I did my review on the Atlas 1.0, and that's the weight. Like seriously, when you put it on, you start to wonder, how can it actually be as light as it is? If you haven't tried on one, I urge you to find a buddy that has one and try it on for yourself because nothing I say in a video will translate that feeling. Obviously, with this being a carbon fiber helmet, we all expect it to be light, and you wouldn't be wrong. The Atlas 2.0 is coming in at just 2.7 pounds, which is insane. I have another carbon fiber helmet that weighs almost an entire pound more than that. Now, obviously one of the ways that these helmets can be so light is because of their carbon fiber construction. And for you carbon fiber nerds out there, if there is such a thing, <laughs> the type of carbon fiber that is used in the Rurok Atlas 2.0 is T-300 aerospace grade carbon fiber. Whatever the hell that is. All I know is that it looks good, it's light as hell, and I love it. So you're sitting there looking at this Atlas 1.0 and you're looking at the Atlas 2.0 and you're saying, hmm, Chase, 
Both of those helmets look very similar, and you would not be wrong, my friend. So let's jump into the updates that happened from Atlas 1.0 specifically to Atlas 2.0. Now, yes, these helmets do look very similar, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if you started out in the game with a badass helmet design, you probably shouldn't change it that much. The main way to tell between the Atlas 1.0 and 2.0 are here on the sides of the visor. This is one of the major changes from 1 to 2, and that's the addition of a toolless visor removal system. As you can see, their first helmet required a tool to switch visors. Now, you just have to push these tabs in and turn them, and you can easily remove the visor yourself. No tools needed. I don't change my visor very often, but this is one change that I really appreciated. Especially with as many colored visor options as Rurik offers for their Atlas line, it makes it totally understandable to get a couple visor colors and then switch them out whenever you want. Last thing about the visors is that they are now pin lock ready, which I know is a huge deal for a lot of you guys out there. I didn't even know what pin lock was for a while, but now that I've used it, I love using them and have one installed on my Carbon Atlas 2.0 now. So final thing to talk about before we get into my thoughts is that the Atlas 2.0 is still compatible with Rurok's Bluetooth shockwave system. You guys can look into this more if you'd like, but basically there is a small cavity in the back of the helmet that perfectly fits a Bluetooth device that Rurok makes and it's seamless, meaning you can install it into the helmet and have all the benefits of a Bluetooth device without having anything installed on the outside of your helmet, which is pretty awesome. It's also very cost effective if you're wanting helmet audio. The Shockwave is only coming in at $150. Oh, and that reminds me, we still gotta talk about the pricing for the Atlas 2.0. So it's gonna range. It tops out at $575 if you want the carbon model like I have, or it goes down to $420 if you just want the core black model. Now guys, that's about all the specs info I have on the helmet. So now we get the fun part. We're gonna go jump on the bike and I'm gonna be able to tell you guys how I have felt riding in the helmet for the last couple months. And we're gonna jump into some stuff that I think the helmet and Rurok can improve on their next model. So I'm gonna go grab my MT-10 and I'll see you guys on the bike. All right guys, so hopefully you guys can hear me well. I've got a, I just grabbed one of my microphones, just shoved it in this helmet. And I've got my audio recorder that I typically use down here in my chest, so I'm hoping the audio is pretty decent for this review. But we are here with the Atlas 2.0, and uh, let's go over my thoughts on the helmet. So while we're stopped real quick, one of the issues with uh, the Atlas 1.0 is this padding here around the Fidlock. On the Atlas 1.0, I'll show you guys a video, this little extra padding really overlapped a lot, and it made it kind of annoying to put the helmet on, Granted, the Fidlock made it a lot easier to use instead of like the regular D-ring setup, but now they've trimmed this area up to as long as it needs to be to where it barely almost touches here, and that is a huge deal. I know it doesn't sound like a lot that they just trimmed that up, but it was super annoying, and now that's not a thing anymore, so super big fan of that addition. Another kind of weird thing that changed with the Atlas 2.0 is when I was in an Atlas 1.0, I wore a large helmet, the large size, and the helmet fit pretty good. Now with the 2.0, I have found that the medium is the right size for me. So I don't know if the shell changed or, you know, I don't know what caused it, but for whatever reason, the helmets do fit a little bigger now. So if you're like me, you might need to drop down a size if you're one of those people that's upgrading from 1.0 to 2.0. I will say this medium, in the carbon fits me better than my large did. So I am happy with the change because now I have a better overall fitting helmet. So earlier in the video, uh, I was telling you guys about the new visor clicks. The audio might get a little sketch for a second, one second. So you guys can hear that click, right? Click, click, click. We got three clicks. I love having clicks now. Ah, bugs. It gives that helmet a more premium feel, and which it should, you know, us motorcyclists, we should expect our helmets to have clicks on them. Now, I do love the clicks, but here's the thing. If you guys ride a lot, you know what I'm gonna be talking about. If you don't ride, you will eventually. When you're riding, it's hot as hell today, right? I don't want my visor all the way up because it's gonna give access for bugs and debris to hit my eye. But what I want is I want one click like right there. Can you guys tell? There's like a little crack. What that crack does is give you a lot of air, but still gives you all the protection on your face. That is one thing I wish that the, the little ticks would give me right now, because I don't have that. And granted, you know, I've got this locking down here at the bottom, so I can open it up, and it cracks a little bit. 
but if we had a little visor crack right there it would be super solid so uh Rurock, on the next helmet i want one more click i don't want any more than that i just want one more also we're going kind of slow right now so i'll go to an area i'll find somewhere i can go a little bit faster but if you guys notice the wind noise is not as bad as the atlas 1.0 when i did the review of the first atlas the uh there was a ton of wind and if, you know we're in north georgia right now it gets pretty hot in the summertime i'm here for more wind but as a motor vlogger i want my audio to be as good as possible so you see these little side vents where are they right there these guys on the 1.0 those were ear side vents and they would funnel a ton of air so the atlas 1.0 is a phenomenal helmet to ride in the summertime or when you're hot but what do we know air causes noise some people don't like noise in their helmet some people don't care i found that on 1.0 if i wore earplugs it'd be fine didn't really matter but on the 2.0 they've actually closed up these side vents to where they don't make any wind anymore and i'm gonna go ahead and go so i can hit this turn because it looks fun we can also test the wind that's what we're doing we're testing the wind so you guys let me know right now we're going how fast are we going 75 let me know what the audio sounds like granted i don't have a locked in audio set up on this helmet right now so it'll get better but oh it speed limit's 45 okay well i'm not gonna go 80 anymore uh but yeah you guys let me know what does the wind sound like to you to my ears this helmet is night and day quieter from the atlas 1.0 which is super cool granted i'm not going to funnel as much air to my face and be as cool but if i get that little crack i'll be there I, that's that's what i'm wanting one more time going fast oh all right thought i was a cop man white cars when you're going fast is not a joke all right guys so final thing that stood out to me when i uh, got the atlas 2.0 is the visor the visibility on this thing is nuts now it could have something to do with me being in a medium and it fit my head better but legitimately guys if i look to the left the right and the up i can't see anything like i literally just see clear sky the visors are super clear granted mine's brand new so like you know we'll have to put some time in and get some bugs on it and stuff but right now brand new these things are primo also the thing about Rurock, similar to Icon, they are two companies that understand that us motorcyclists want really cool looking shit. And the amount of visor colors that Rurock is offering is phenomenal. Also, something that's cool with them, every helmet, regardless of which one you buy from them, all come with a clear visor and a smoked visor. No extra charge. You know what I mean? Like, so they already give you a smoked out visor that other companies would would charge you for. So I love the fact that they include that. Another cool thing is this pin lock stuff. Now I've never really been one of those people like, if my helmet can't have pin lock, I don't want it. Never been like that. But now that I'm trying out this pin lock stuff, bro, I'm I'm kind of understanding where all those people are coming from. The pin lock legit works so well. So. I wasn't a huge like not that i didn't care about it but i just really didn't understand i understand now and i love that shit. all right coming up to a red light and uh i guess we can probably start talking about the negatives of the uh let's go this way why not as you guys know no helmet no item ever is perfect so i do want to touch on some areas that i would like to see rurog spend some time and energy into really upping what they got going on first off is the padding now this is not to say that the padding in this helmet is subpar at all the padding feels really good but one thing that i would like to see is this padding is solid great it's above average but what i want because i'm you know i'm trying to build a helmet that is like picture perfect right one thing that i want them to do is put some time and energy into the padding and get that padding up to that showy level. If any of you guys have ever ridden in a showy or in a rye or a top tier, a top shelf helmet company, you know that the padding in there specifically is phenomenal. Now showy is the best option for me as far as like padding goes. Those are probably the most comfortable helmets I've ever ridden. I've got an X14 in the garage and uh, 
probably the best feeling helmet I have. Now, like I said, this padding, I have no problems with it, but I want these guys to make a premium helmet. I want Rock to have a top shelf. So we're trying to push them to that top shelf level. Next up, moving a little over from the padding, are the clips that hold the, uh, the padding into the helmet. Most uh, companies have some sort of like little push pin that uh, it's how you take your padding in and out if you want to wash it or something like that. The, the material, the plastic used on the back of this padding, I haven't had a problem. You know, I've wired this helmet up so I had to take the padding in and out. But a lot, while I was doing that, I noticed that those push pins, they did look a little fragile. Now, like I said, I haven't had one break on me, but I would be worried that they would break. So I would like to see in the next uh, iteration of this Atlas, I'd like them to upgrade that material, you know, maybe a better plastic. Uh, I mean, I, I really can't talk about it. I don't know a ton of about that material that is used on the back to uh, just pop the, uh, the cheek pads and stuff in. But you know, I would like to see something a little upgraded from what they're currently using. Uh, and you know, I'll have to give you guys maybe like a six month review of the Atlas 2.0. And that way we can see like, did one of them pop off or break or something like that? We can kind of find out. And honestly guys, the final thing that I, I can really put my finger on that I would like to see upgraded, I don't really know if this is a group thing, like or if all the Atlases are like this or if it's just mine, but this chin skirt here on mine, if I don't have it tucked in absolutely perfectly, I find that it falls out a little bit. Now, this is kind of where I need y'all's help. If you're out there and you have an Atlas 2.0, let me know if your chin skirt happens to fall out sometimes. And that way we can find out, is it just mine? You know, am I messing up by not putting it in perfectly? Or, or what's the deal? Me personally, I'm having a little bit of an issue. Like right now you guys can see it ain't going nowhere, but I've got it in perfectly. If it comes unperfect, it might, it might fall out some, which is, it's a bit annoying. But the crazy thing is, that's it. Those are the only like negatives that I have. And they're not even negatives. They're more of like areas that I would like to see Rurock improve on their next model. If I'm going to be totally honest, other than the little crack on the visor, that's really the only thing I really want. If I'm going to be totally honest, I'm fine with the padding. You know what I mean? It's just that click that I, I really need to be improved. But other than that, man, there's, there's not much more I can ask for in, a, in another Atlas line, to be honest. But guys, I'm, I'm thinking that's everything I wanted to hit on. Overall, the last month or so that I've been riding around the Atlas 2.0, I have been so happy with this helmet. I was happy with the 1.0. And you don't even think about it until you ride in the upgrade that you're like, damn, I guess we could get a better helmet. You know, we could get some more premium features. So the one last thing that I really wanted to touch on super fast is the fact that these videos, these reviews, y'all's opinions, y'all's comments, these are crazy important for Rurok because for the first time that I can remember, we have a helmet manufacturer that is actually actively listening to its audience and making these helmets better in the ways that we're asking for. I can literally get on a call with a guy, my guy from Rurok tomorrow, and be like, hey, I talked to some guys that have been riding in Ruroks. Here's something that we want upgraded in the next one. Guys, in six months, they went from Atlas 1.0 to 2.0. You have an extremely young, active company that wants to make the best product they possibly can, and they actually know. Somehow these other companies don't know. If you listen to the, your customer base, you can make the best helmet for them. This is why I believe in this company so freaking much, because we have the opportunity to shape the products that we want. I know a lot of you guys, you know, you see Rurok all over YouTube, because that's our platform here. And Rurock is doing a genius move. They're, they're using their ad budget instead of you know, buying web ads. They just spend that money on a couple extra helmets and send them out to YouTube people. That's why you see them all over the place. But I don't know about other YouTubers. I'm not talking for them. I'm talking for me. The reason I rep Rurock like I do is because I, I, I authentically feel like they give a shit 
about this helmet and about this community. So, in saying that, before we jump back to the garage chase, I want to implore you guys, if you're watching this video and you have an Atlas 1.0, an Atlas 2.0, be vocal about what you would like to see changed because the odds of it actually happening are insanely high when it comes to this company and these style of helmets. But that's all I gotta say. I know I've been rambling for a little too long. I'm trying to not make these videos too long, but it happens. You know, I'm passionate about this stuff. I love motorcycle stuff. I love motorcycle gear. And I wanna give you guys as much information as I possibly can. Also, right now, however you hear me, is a perfect example of highway wind noise with this Atlas 2.0. You guys can tell me what it sounds like and let me know in the comments. All right, that's all I got. Let's throw it back to Chase in the garage and he will finish this video up. Chase, what you got? Let's finish it up, my dude. Thank you, riding Chase. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's gonna be it for our Atlas 2.0 review. Let us know in the comments what you guys feel about the improvements they've made from Atlas 1.0 to 2.0. You guys know how I feel about Rurik. I love the fact that a company is actually listening to us as a motorcycle community and building a helmet and putting in the modifications for it that we want. So let's have a conversation down in this video and talk about what we wanna see next, what we feel about the current stuff, because they freaking listen. Guys, I'm Chase on Two Wheels. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more motorcycle content. I will see you guys on the next one. Later. All right, outro crew, what do we think? What color are you guys wanting? Do you go, do you go full carbon? Or, do, or are you subtle and you're like, nah, dude, I just need the core. Just need that black core. Just get a colored visor because it looks all right, that's our crew. Love you guys a long time. See you on the next one. Thanks for getting in the video.